to expect a night attack. In Leyte Gulf were 56 transports and amphibious ships, including the cruiser on which General MacArthur was based. The first step was to throw a screen of escort destroyers and patrol boats around the ships and all traffic in and out of the Gulf was ordered to stop at sunset. Meanwhile, 7th Fleet's commanders prepared to fight the most devastating action in the Battle of Leyte Gulf. Because the Japanese clearly intended to enter the Surigao Strait at night, neither the escort carriers of 7th Fleet nor the army bombers in the region could be of any help to the defence. An action would have to be fought by surface warships, and that meant the old battleships and cruisers of the shore bombardment force, commanded by Rear Admiral Jesse Oldendorf. Oldendorf made painstaking preparations. He would have the fleet's destroyers, and with these, he was determined to weaken the Japanese before the big ships engaged. The Admiral ordered his forces to take up positions across the northern end of the Surigao Strait and make ready to meet the enemy. The American battle line would be made up of six battleships which would steam east and west across the Surigao Strait. To the north was placed a column of six destroyers, Destroyer Division X-Ray, to guard against enemy submarines. In front of the battleships were placed two groups of cruisers, right and left flank. The left flank cruisers were screened by the nine destroyers of Destroyer Squadron 56. The right flank destroyers were Destroyer Squadron 24, with six ships patrolling a north-south line. A picket of seven destroyers from another command, Destroyer Squadron 54, was already operating on both sides of Hibusan Island. If the enemy approached up the strait, as expected, Oldendorf would have succeeded in executing the classic naval manoeuvre of crossing the T. The highest tactical ambition of any fleet commander. The American battle line would be able to fire full broadsides, while the enemy would be unable to bring all its guns to bear until it could manoeuvre, and by then it would be too late. The American defenders at Leyte had no aircraft available which could operate at night. Seventh Fleet had to rely for information on 13 groups of radar-equipped torpedo patrol boats, 39 in all, which were sent on the afternoon of the 25th to find the enemy. The PT boats made their first contact with the Japanese fleet at 22.50, for the next four hours, they launched one frenzied torpedo attack after another. No Japanese ships were hit, but at the cost of a single boat, a constant stream of reports reached the waiting American warships in the Surigao Strait. Next to attack were the destroyers of Squadron 54, which sighted the enemy column at 0245 and raced towards the Japanese fleet at 30 knots.
As it entered the Surigao Strait, Force C was sailing with the battleships Yamashiro and Fuzo and cruiser Magami in column, with four destroyers as a screen ahead. Destroyer Squadron 54 attacked in two groups. The first section raced down the strait and launched its torpedoes at 0300, hitting Fuzo, which fell out of formation, sinking. Nine minutes later, the second section launched its torpedoes. Three of the Japanese destroyers and the battleship Yamashiro were hit. Two of the destroyers were sinking and all three were knocked out of the fight. But Yamashiro continued to steam on. The Japanese column was now reduced to Yamashiro, the cruiser Mogami and the destroyer Shigure. Altogether, 47 torpedoes had been fired by the first two destroyer groups to attack in the Surigao Strait. Five Japanese ships had been hit, of which three had been sunk or were sinking. It was a superbly well-executed attack, one of the most successful destroyer actions of the whole war. But Force C's ordeal at the hands of 7th Fleet's destroyers was not yet over. As the right flank and then the left flank destroyers attacked, Yamashiro was hit again twice and the damaged destroyer Mochishio was sunk. Altogether, the American torpedo attacks had accounted for 75% of the firepower of Force C. Meanwhile, the guns of the American cruisers and battleships, 64 of them massive 14 or 16 inch weapons, prepared to fire on the approaching Japanese column. The first American ships to open up were the right and left flank cruisers. Of the battleships, it was those with the latest radar that fired first, West Virginia, Tennessee and California. Between them, they shot off 93 rounds of 16-inch and 132 rounds of 14-inch armor-piercing shell in six-gun salvos. The cruisers fired more than 4,000 rounds. Overwhelmed by the storm of fire, Mogami and Yamashiro took hit after hit. Five minutes after the American line had opened up, both ships were ablaze and slowly retreating. At 0419, the battleship Yamashiro capsized and sank, taking with her the force commander, Admiral Nishimura, and almost all her hands. Only the blazing cruiser Mogami and two destroyers, one badly damaged, were able to retreat back down the Surigao Strait. At first light, American aircraft from 7th Fleet's escort carriers were sent to find the remnants of Force C. During the night, the cruisers of the Japanese 5th Fleet had also begun to enter the strait but had quickly fled, one of their number torpedoed by an American PT boat. Now they were the object of an intensive search by American aircraft and a chase by Oldendorf's fleet. Cruisers, carrier planes and army bombers would finish off all the crippled ships from both Japanese forces, while of the whole Japanese southern force only a cruiser and five destroyers would survive.